Father God, I thank you, Lord God. Thank you for the word that's about to go forth, Father. I thank you for, for constantly pouring your spirit upon us, Lord God. Pour, and, and we just continue to seek your face, Father God. I thank you for the word that you have entrusted, Pastor, to deliver, Lord God. That it be a rhyme word, Lord God. Lord God, we just thank you for who you are. Give us ears to hear what thus says the Lord. Give us spiritual eyes to see, Father God. Take us past the veil, Lord God. Give us a deeper understanding, Lord God. Give us a word that we must activate, Lord God, that will set a fire in us to go out and preach the gospel to those that are dying Lord God because we living in a dying world Father God but we know that we never die Lord God that we live in you Lord God that our eternity is set ahead Lord so we I pray that each and every person that we come in contact with Lord has an opportunity to accept you and live eternal with you Lord so we just thank you we thank you for the word we pray against every technical difficulty any plot plan or strategy of Satan any demonic attack anything that that coward devil can use we cut it off right now Father God, we just thank you. We stand in expectation. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray. And everybody say, Amen. Amen. Let you. Amen. Y'all go ahead and greet somebody. Let them know. You made it to church. You a soldier. Because sometimes you fighting the weather. You fighting the Saints game. You fighting all kinds of stuff. But they got the riders that come to church on a Wednesday midweek service through the rain. Look, give yourself a pat on the back. Either in a battle, you just came expecting to receive. Who came expecting to receive? Well, there got to be an expectation in the atmosphere. He is who he said he is. And I believe on a Wednesday night, and I know I didn't have this word. This was not, this was God. This was being led by the Spirit. I can't remember the last time I preached on a Wednesday, but just being obedient to the Spirit of God. Maybe it was just a coincidence, though. Huh? Where the church at? The, the, there is no such thing as coincidence. Y'all are exactly right. That's not even a word in the Hebrew dialect. In the Greek, it's a compound word, synchreon, which means working together with supreme authority. So that means right now is working together with supreme authority. And his hips wish is that none shall perish. And he wants to carry your burden. And he led you here today. So that means you are a child of the Most High King because those that are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. Amen. So that means you a child and he's a good father. Father. So we can expect to receive. The word he put on my heart was amazing grace. Oh, I, do I have anybody that can sing in the house? Amazing grace. Y'all just going to leave me out there by myself. How sweet the sound that saved the red like me. Come on, church. I once was blind, but now I see. Remix. <laughs> Amazing grace. Can I tell you that you're not in a that you haven't been through a situation that God hasn't pulled you out of? Can I tell you that tonight? I know it's a fact because if not, you wouldn't be here right now. Maybe, or maybe he's pulling you through right now, amen? But that's the God I serve, and that's why we live this life in seasons. And the enemy, he wants so much to distract you and get your focus off of Christ in the cross to where you get engulfed with your situation. And now you make your situation your God because you're exalting it higher than him, thinking you'll never get out of the situation you're in. The devil is a liar. Maybe it's taking some time, but can I tell you, he's working something out of you. He's letting patience have his perfect work so you could be complete, lacking nothing. Amen. Can you turn my mic down a little bit? Because I get loud. So I'm going to jump right into it. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 to 9. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Your salvation is a gift from God. What have you been doing with your salvation? It's a gift. We're not supposed to bury our gifts. Then he said, we say by grace through faith, amen, lest any man should boast. See, you didn't work your salvation out, amen. We don't work for salvation. We work because of salvation. Faith without works is dead. But can we be honest and say, we didn't work ourselves to be saved? Were you looking for God your whole life or was he looking for you? 
People are like, oh, you found God. No, I didn't I find God. God has always been there. You just stop running. Or maybe y'all the super holy righteous crowd because it's a Wednesday night. Amen. But can I tell you, it's not by your works that you've been saved. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So if it's a gift, let's read about what God desires us to do with our gifts. Matthew 25. For it is just like a man who was about to take a journey, and he called his servants together and entrusted them with his possessions. To one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, each according to his own ability, and then he went on his journey. The one who had received the five talents went at once and traded with them, and he made a profit and gained five more. Likewise, the one who had two made a profit and gained two more. But the one who had received the one went and dug a hole in the ground and his and and hid his master's money. Tap your neighbor, say, get out that hole. Now, after a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. And the one who had received the five talents came and brought him five more, saying, Master, you entrusted to me five talents. See, I have made a profit and gained five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful and trustworthy over a little I will put you in charge of many things, sharing the joy of your master. Also, the one who had the talents came, the two talents came forward saying, Master, you entrusted two talents to me. See, I have made a profit and gained two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful and trustworthy over a little. I will put you in charge of many things. Share in the joy of your master. Amen. The one who had received one talent also came forward saying, Master, I knew you had to be a harsh and demanding man, reaping the harvest where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid to lose the talent. And I went and hid your talent in the ground. See, you have what is your own. But his master answered him, You wicked, lazy servant. You know that I reap the harvest where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter seed? Then you ought to have put my money with the bankers, and at my return I would have received my money back with interest. So take the talent away from him and give it to the one who has the ten talents. For to everyone who has and values his blessings and gifts from God and has used them wisely, more will be given." And he will be richly supplied so that he will have an abundance. But from the one who does not have, because he has ignored or disregarded his blessings and gifts from God, even what he does have will be taken away. And throw out the worthless servant into the outer darkness in that place of grief and torment, where there will be over sorrow and pain and grinding of teeth over distress and anger. What are you doing with your gifts? I read, I, read, I read that parable and it's like, he gave one five, he gave one two, he gave one one. Is God not just? Why did he give one five and the other two and give one one? He said, I've given each talents based upon their ability, based upon their capacity. It's like, if you have an unending source of water and you have a pitcher right here, you have a five-gallon drum right here, and you have a cup right here, does it matter how much water I have to pour in if you only have a cup? He gives to each according to their ability. Now, God is so awesome because he says, grow in grace and the knowledge of Christ Jesus. He says, covet the gifts, and I'll show you an even more awesome way. That's the West Bank translation. So we tend to want more, but can we handle more? We tend to want more, but are we being faithful with what we've already been given? If salvation is a gift, 
What have you done with your gift of salvation? Have you shared it? Have you spoke it? Have you prayed with people? Have you ministered to people? Are you making disciples? This is a gift, a free gift from God. So I look at the man with the five talents and, you know, I look at the ability like, all right, like I'm a, I might be the, like the two talent guy because I can't do nothing but rap and, and minister a little bit. But a little bit is a lot when God's in it, right? Because he just needs your little bit and then he'll be the rest. Praise God. And I look at some people like have so many talents and praise God. And they'd be good stewards with their talents. Then I look at the man with the one talent. And he buried his gift. And he said, he had a reason. He said, because you being a hard man. Now it makes sense why the Bible says to grow in grace and the knowledge of Christ Jesus. The more you get to know who Jesus is and the gift of your salvation, then you'll know who you are and what you're capable of. Because when I tell you salvation brought redemption and redemption brought us back to the garden where we had power and authority, which was the first conversation recorded with man. He said, be fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue and have dominion. Have you been doing these things? Now, this ain't no condemnation in Christ Jesus. But you need to understand who you are in Christ. You need to understand what you have already been given so you can be faithful with the little. Then he can make you rule over much. He dug, he, 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 he dug his gifts. He put them in a hole. He thought he was doing right, but I, I, I was doing Bible study with Alex this morning. And I was, share, I, was, I was explaining this parable to him. And I was like, it's like if I buy you a gift and you just throw it in the closet. No, I want you to use your gift. I'm not going to buy you no more toy. You ain't play with the last toy I gave you. So he said, oh, I, I get it. Because why did he give the man with the, with, with the one that didn't use the talent, why did he give his talent to the man that had the ten? Why he didn't give it to the one that had the four? And he said, I, I think I know what it is, Dad. He said, is that one man's, one man's trash is another man's treasure? I said, it kind of is. Because if God gave you a gift and you're not using it, it's like you're considering it trash. So then he'll take that gift from you and give it to the one that is using it. Amen? Because he's not going to let it go to waste. One of my prayers to this day is, Lord, Please do not have to use anyone to do what you've called me to do. Because can't nobody exempt you but you. You're scorned by the words of your own mouth. You keep saying you can't, you won't. Because you entrap yourself by what you speak. But that's why you need to know who Christ is so you speak the word over yourself and who he says you is, not who they say you are, not who even you say you are. That goes back to feelings. Can I, look, can I tell you to get out your feelings and get in the spirit and know your identity and know who you are because once you know that there's nothing that coward devil can throw at you because you armored up amen we all have a gift and I and 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 that one of the biggest tricks the enemy will play is telling you that you're not good at nothing Oh, that you just made, this. this is what you made of your life, and this is where you're going to stay. You're never going to do no more. Then you live your life just going through the motions, punching in the clock, setting an alarm, hitting snooze because you don't feel like getting up because you're like, what am I getting up to? The same old routine. And Isaiah said, there's, there's no greater pain than in being impregnated with something and not having the strength to deliver what you impregnated with. Women, can I get an Amen. I don't know, maybe y'all had quick babies, but so I hear, you know, the contractions and all of that. Some people go through hours, so I, I heard people go through a day. But some people are going through a life with greatness inside of them, but not knowing how to tap into it, or they're just listening to the enemy, or they don't know who the father is, so they're burying their gift because they think that they could never do this, and how could they do that? Because look where I came from. You know when they said, surely nothing good will come from Nazareth? You know the people that said that? They were from Nazareth? 
So they weren't just speaking against him, they were speaking against themselves because they feel like if I'm from here and I ain't nothing and you're from the same place I'm from, how are you going to be something? How could you be this Jesus that's doing all of these miracles? I'm here to tell you Christ in you is the hope of glory. Let them say how you can and let them watch you do. Oh, they, they still watching, you know what I mean? And they're not going to stop. So let the same people watching and praying on your downfall <laughs> get turned over to Christ as they see the light inside of you, which is the hope of glory. Amen? So I'm looking at it, and, you know, I, I remember when, uh, when, the show, when, when the Let Us Worship first came over here. And it's funny how when you're faithful with the little, he really does make you rule over much. And one act of obedience will unlock the desires of your heart that you don't even know is a desire yet. He said, delight in me, and I'll grant you the desires of your heart. But a lot of times we got these dreams and aspirations, and when it doesn't look like we expected it to look, we think that's small or that's futile or that, that, that's not what I was called to do. You know, I was going to different churches, uh, a part of a pretty nice big church, you know what I'm saying? And when God started telling me I was going to pastor, I thought I was going to start in a church. And he said, start in your living room. That wasn't how I pictured it, but I had to be faithful with the little. He made us rule over much. We handled that Wednesday's church service at the house like it was a Sunday's church service in this building. We had praise and worship. We, had, we was casting out demons. We was baptizing in the kiddie pool, amen? I, I used to get in my feelings when people was like, the little Bible study. I'm like, it's not a Bible study. This is church. This is church. Faithful with the little will make you rule over much. So the Let Us Worship first came down here. And before the Let Us Worship came, God was saying, I want y'all to go on Bourbon Street, and I want y'all to do outreach. I want y'all to do the Christian rap. I want you to preach the gospel. I want you to have some people out there testifying. I want you to pray with people. I don't want you out there with signs telling people they're going to hell. I want you out there telling people about heaven. I'm not speaking against what nobody else does. I'm just being obedient to what he's calling me to do. The goodness of Christ leading the sinners unto repentance. So we started doing it. And they had this guy from Minneapolis that was backsliding. His baby died. And then him and his wife, they was, they was going through a divorce. He ended up going to Miami. Then he ended up finding himself on Bourbon Street, of all places, right? And... uh. He said he passed the other guys with the signs, and he's like, that's what like, drove him away. He was already beat up. He wasn't trying to get beat up even more. He said he kept walking, and he, he likes rap, right? So he said he heard some music going on, so he stopped. So when he stopped, he just didn't know it was Christian hip-hop, right? So he said he stopped because he liked the music, and then he was embraced by so many people asking him, can I pray for you and loving on him? And it was the goodness of Christ leading the sinners unto repentance. He ended up giving his life back to Christ, rededicating his life to Christ right there on Bourbon Street. Ended up getting a ticket to go back home. And he's still serving in his church right now today. So then... The, 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 the thing happened with George Floyd, and, and I had a desire to go out there and preach the gospel, but I was not permitted to go yet. And God said, did I tell you to go? I said, all right. Not knowing things were going to happen over here that we was going to get involved in, and God was going to use us to bring reconciliation and use us to break yokes. So just being obedient to the spirit of God, staying here where he called me to be. And then an opportunity opened up in Juneteenth where it was that one guy that was lost on Bourbon Street, that ended up giving his life back to Christ. He was out there in Minneapolis, and he was telling them about our ministry, and then we had an invitation to come down there. I'm going somewhere. I don't know who I'm talking to. I don't know what the last thing God told you to do that you haven't done. And I don't know where you're at in your walk, but I'm here to tell you, just start doing. Amen? Don't wait till you feel like you got it all together. Amen? Because he's the one that holds us together. Praise God. So as we was walking, uh, as we was able to go over there, then, then Sean Foch was there the week before we were there. And then when I started seeing the letters worship going on, I'm like, man, I want to go out there. So I was trying to figure out where they was going to be at and see if things lined up so I could go out there. And as I had a desire to go out there, I get a call from the man of God that brought me out there to Minneapolis. And he's like, 
Amen. You want to bring the letters of worship to New Orleans? I'm like, yes, I do. Praise God. And he was like, well, it's going to take this and that. Can, can you make that happen? I said, man, you know who my God is? Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. Even though I knew I couldn't do it, but I know who my God is. So I committed. I said, let's do it. And as I said, let's do it. Before I could eat, I made one phone call and already got half of what it was going to take to make it happen. And then I get another phone call. Hey, he's already going out there. I'm going to try to connect you with the people that are bringing him down. Then I get another call from the people that are bringing him down. Hey, we bringing uh, Sean down. I, you know, I want you to be a part of it. I'm like, praise God. So God gave me a vision of where it was going to be at. And when I shared, we went to this meeting. I shared the vision of where it was going to be at. And... Uh, they was like, well, that's not where we're going to do it. We're going to do it over here, like in, in Audubon Park, which is like a mile away from where he showed me it was going to be at. And I was like, well, that's in the vicinity, but this is what God showed me. But, you know, I'm just here to help. Like, this is y'all thing or whatever. So then when we went out there to go pray over the land and go pray over everything, I, I just pray in the presence of God, spirit led the direction, trying to see where we was going to put the sound in the stage. Then a guy that I invited... He ends up working for the place at Audubon and letting them know this is not public property. Audubon really bought it, so now you need a permit. And this, they weren't giving out permits at the time because of COVID. So they was like, man, I, what, we're not going to be able to do it here. They're going to run it off. And I was like, well, you know, God showed me to do it over here, right? So, so we're walking while we're praying, and they was like, yeah, but we don't have a permit. I said, we don't need a permit to do it right here. How, how do you know? I said, this is public property. I said, this is where BLM had their protests when they didn't have permits and they couldn't tell them to go because this is public property, First Amendment. So, you know, I did my homework. So guess where we ended up doing the event at? Right where God showed me. But I was working my gifts. I was speaking. I was, pro I was speaking in the prophetic because God showed it to me, so I had to release it and speak it. When God shows you something, the enemy's instantly going to battle with God showing you, trying to make you think, what if I'm wrong? Or, or, or make you think, I don't know if he ever played this on y'all, or I'm going to make God look bad if I'm wrong. That's what he used to do me until I just jumped out and just did it. And when the first time I moved in that office... He blew my mind. The, I, the, the kid thought his mind was getting blown, but I, my mind was getting blown that God just showed me things in his life that nobody knew. It's a double-edged sword. The, can, I, can I tell you that salvation is a gift? And in that gift, he allows you to operate in different offices as you desire because you're delighting in him. And it's not about puffing you up, amen? Knowledge puffs up, love edifies. He knows your heart. If you're doing it unto the Father, he wants to use you. You think you want to be used? He wants to use you. As my kids grow up, when, when Alex, he couldn't talk till he was almost four years old. You know how much it hurt me to not be able to hear my son talk? I had a desire to hear him talk. As a parent, don't you want to hit you, see your kids reach different milestones? And they are because God has no respect of man. What he does for one, he'll do for another. But I stood on that and I had a desire and it was such a, such a, such a joy when he began to talk. And it's still a joy that he talks a lot. You know what I'm saying? I remember when I was praying, God was like, you was praying for that, boy. I was like, well, praise God. Today he's talking about being a pastor. Well, on the way over here, he said he was 75% sure. By the time we got in the, before we got into the parking lot, he said, well, I'm 100% sure. I'm 100% sure. I'm like, but that's not me telling him he has to be this or that. That's the Holy Spirit just moving, amen? So we do it right there at that spot. So when we do it at this spot, I'm just there to play my part and do what they asked me to do. And that was do the baptisms. So as I'm on this side to do the baptisms, we had the baptismal over here. They had all of the pastors up there. And the enemy battling with me, oh, you know, you still, because he's, he, can I tell you, he's always going to bring up your past. You don't hit a certain level in your walk to where, you get a Holy Ghost amnesia of where you came from or who you was. And the enemy always wants to dig up that old man because he wants you to feel less than. But in Christ, we're more than. Amen? More than what? More than conquerors. More than, I could keep going. Amen? So as I'm over there and I was like, well, you know what? So as the enemy, I, I'm praising and worshiping and I'm looking at them over there and I'm like, 
God, well, devil, I'm right where I need to be. I came here to do baptisms, and that's what I'm going to do. They don't need to acknowledge me. They don't need to call me up there because the Father has already acknowledged me. Amen. Man, you don't need man to validate you because the Father validates you. You don't need a stage to preach the gospel because you're supposed to do that in season, out of season, wherever you at. What have you done with your amazing grace? Because we're saved by grace through faith. And salvation is a gift from God. Amen? Lest no man should boast. So as I'm there, and, and the enemy's battling me with that, and then I rebuke him, and I just start praising and worshiping. I wasn't worried. I'm going to be right here. I'm going to play my position. People are going to get baptized. This is what I'm here to do with my church fam. We praising and worshiping. And then the man comes looking for me, taps me. Hey, hey, come here. I, I, I want you to speak. Speak. What you want me to say? <laughs> You want me to rap? You want me to do, like, what you want me to do? Like, whatever God's telling you, whatever God's telling you. I said, okay, praise God. So he pulls me up there. Lauren Daigle's right there. He's right there. And I'm praying in my head. And God, what would you have me to say? He said, what were you just battling with? That I didn't belong here? He said, that's what I want you to say. So then I get the microphone. I said, God's telling some of y'all, y'all don't belong here. Because he's telling me I don't belong here. But you belong here because you're here. Amen. Because God directs your steps along with your stop. I can't, I'm not quoting exactly what I said, but this was the heart behind it. Because I think God is lying to some people right now, telling them where they don't belong and telling them what the devil, what, what, what's not going to happen in their life. And they're never going to reach this and they're never going to reach that. And they're always going to be down here and they're never going to hit this point. They're always going to have lack and they're always going to have this one that they worried about and that one. No, the devil is a liar. Oh, 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 we're never going to get equally yoked. Oh, I'm going to be by myself for the rest of my life. Oh, 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 my, my, my son is going to end up dying and he's never going to be what I showed. No, the devil is a liar and God is the truth. Amen. My mama brought my grave in the ground because she just knew she was going to bury me. She can't tell that story right now without crying. But can I tell you the devil is a liar? My mom used to have to take sleeping pills. She doesn't know more. Now, 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 now her only problem is how much I'm going to preach to her. That's a good problem, praise God. That's good. <laughs> so as I spoke that word and I released that word, they had a man there that had a suicidal spirit that was going to kill himself, and we ended up able to baptize him, amen? And the Holy Spirit just moved. But I'm telling you, it's not going to happen when you stay in your comfort zone burying your gift. Thinking if I just hold on to this, I don't want to be ashamed. I don't want people to make fun of me. I don't want nobody to laugh at me. I'm not even a good speaker. But is it God that's going to put the words in your mouth? What's been stopping you? You don't have to answer out loud. So we're talking about amazing grace, right? Second Timothy 1. Y'all don't shout me down tonight, amen? Second Timothy 1, 9 to 11. Who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began, but has now been revealed by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who has abolished death and brought life in immortality to light through the gospel to which I was appointed a preacher and apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles. What did he save us for? Who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began. He reminds us, not by our works, because see, if our confidence was in our works, then we'll lose our confidence when we, can, when we can no longer do the work. Our confidence got to be in Christ Jesus. Now he says, I've given you grace for what? A holy calling. So that means whatever God's calling you to do, you have the grace to do it. So many people you see fall out of the faith or fall out of position because they stepped into a position that they didn't have the grace to obtain. Because they wanted it so bad, or they want to be the pastor, or they want to be the worship leader, or they want to do this. No, no, what does God want? What does God want? You need to find your rhythm in ministry. You need to find your rhythm with your walk, amen, because you need to begin to use your gifts. Because if not, you're burying your gifts, and you were never called to just sit in the church pew. 
He said, upon this rock, I will build my church. I will build my ecclesia. What are you doing with your gift of salvation that you've been given by the amazing grace of God? These are questions you need to ask yourself. Look at the world. Look what's going on. Look at, look, look at the mass shootings they just had. Look at the other. See, that young man didn't know the Jesus that we know. We're looking at the problem. The murder rate's going up over 40% right here in New Orleans. The church has to be the church. If we're the light of the world, darkness is not even a thing. It's the absence of light. So if it's dark out here, it's because the light's not being the light. I said, what you doing with your salvation? What are you doing with your light? What are you doing with your life? I said, he reminds us to stop basing your calling on what you think you're equipped to do or limit it to the box that people put you in. You have grace for a holy calling. Oh, and people will put you in a box. You know, they, they, call, they, they call this, uh, I remember when I first heard it when we was in the storefront, they was like, oh yeah, you know what they call that? They call that church for thugs. I said, what? Church for thugs? I said, what? It's, yeah, church for thugs, church for teachers, church for cops, church for everybody, amen? God did not call the righteous unto, he called the sinners, amen? Praise God unto repentance. So as I heard that, I kind of thought like we grew out of that, right? Because, you know, they got a doctor, they got teachers, they got police officers, they got business owners, they got thugs, they got people just getting out of jail and people that never been to jail. But does that bother? Why, why did I let that bother me? And the guy said, look, people are going to always talk. But are you doing it for the approval of man or me, Jesus Christ? I said, oh, it's all about you, Father. So let them talk. Then, then at, at, at God is so perfect because he allowed me to hear that. Then I was on the phone with another pastor friend that I have, and he was like, he was edifying me. And I was like, where is this? He's like, God just told me to tell you that. And I was like, oh, well, I don't feel like that. He was like, you know, I, like, I just wanted to tell you, like, I, like, the next time I saw you, I wanted to tell you that you're one of the best pastors in the city. Like, you're really doing it. You're moving in the faucet. I don't know about all that. <laughs> I said, I don't know about all that. And then, look, the phone, the, the phone was going in and out, so he hung up and called me back and repeated what he just said because he thought the phone went out. So I was like, man, God just must have wanted me to hear that twice. Have you ever heard of uh, imposter syndrome? You know, that's something that the enemy will always battle with and make you feel less than and make you feel like you're not enough. But as I was reading about the imposter syndrome, it says... It's the persistent inability to believe that one's success is deserved or has been legitimately achieved as a result of one's own effort or skills. I was like, but that's true. Because I'm only saved by grace through faith. I'm not, I don't deserve none of this. I deserve the worst punishment. He received the worst punishment, so we wouldn't have to. So when I looked at it, the people try to talk about imposter syndrome. Really, they want you to take credit for where you at, and then that falls into pride, and pride comes before the fall. So I was like, all right, the persistent inability to believe that one success is deserved or has been legitimately achieved as a result of one's own effort or skills. I said, could this syndrome actually be a sense of humility that if not embraced will push one to a false sense of pride? I can embrace that I don't deserve to be where I'm at and know that it's only by the grace of God. But then I know that if it's by the grace of God, God led me here. So it's God that will keep me here because he that began a good work in you is faithful to complete what he started. Praise God. Philippians 1.6, being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Christ Jesus. That means this work is never complete until the day of Christ Jesus. Have you gotten comfortable in your walk? Have you gotten to a place to where you think this is what it's all about? Come into church, throw some money in the bucket, 
Amen, hallelujah at the right time. No, not y'all because y'all kind of quiet. <laughs> but have you gotten to that place where you're comfortable and complacent with where you're at? Because in that place, you'll never go to a higher place. God called you for a high calling. Look, look at your neighbor and say, God called you for a high calling. That means it's bigger than you. That means it's bigger than you. I don't know who needs to hear that right now because the devil got you feeling so defeated because you put like a time limit and you put an expectation on God that wasn't his expectation for you. Can we look at Joseph and all the things that he went through in the dream that God showed him and he released it to his brothers and the same people he released the dream to stripped them down, beat them up, threw them in a hole, took them out the hole, sold them into slavery, told his dad that he was murdered, that he was dead. Joseph was given a coat of many colors. Can I tell y'all that y'all were given a coat of many colors because y'all favored by the Father? And how do I know? I know that because y'all are here and y'all are only here by amazing grace, not by your works, lest you should boast. I, I thought about Joseph. I'm like, man, Joseph, he must have liked that jacket, the coat of many colors. Because he was in the field wearing it when he was supposed to go talk to his brothers. It was hot out there, and he still had his coat on. He was like, man, I'm going to take this coat off of him. They wanted to kill him, but they couldn't kill him because they cannot curse what God has called blessed. So they took him out the hole and sold him into slavery. He went into slavery. Then he ended up, he had the favor of God on his life. Ended up working for Potiphar, got falsely accused, got thrown into prison. Now he's in prison, but he was still working his gift. He had a gift to interpret dreams. He was in there. He was put next to the man that was next to Pharaoh and was able to read the dream. And then when the time came and nobody could read the dream, no sorcerer, no soothsayer, because I'm here to tell you the favor of God on your life is better than anything that the world has to offer you. So he began to work his gift. Can I tell you to work your gift? Can I tell you if you don't work your gift, he's going to tell you, depart from me, I never knew you. This is a part of it. A lot of people don't talk about it because they don't want people to get all worked up and make people get condemned. And I'm not here to condemn you. I'm here to convict you. Let the Holy Spirit bring conviction. I'm just speaking the truth. And I know that God wants to use you. I know it for a fact because he wouldn't let me sleep at one, one night up with this word to give to y'all that was going to be here today. I didn't know who was coming, but he did. Did you know you was coming? Because I sure didn't. Did you come expecting to receive a word from God? Because if you did, he will meet that expectation. But what do you do with the word that you're given? If there's no application, there's no elevation. Oh, you hearers of the word. You need to be doers of it. Let's get back over here. Let's get back over here. Joseph worked his gift, got put into a place to be second in command, and there was a drought, and he was able to store up everything else. Then his family came back, and he was able to bring save. Uh, he was able to bring the food in the middle of a famine to his entire family and the same people that threw him in a ditch. Could you do that? Are you holding something against the people that threw you in a ditch? That wasn't even in here, so grab that because that was for you. He will complete it, being confident of this very thing, that he who has began a good work in you will complete it until the day of Christ Jesus. He will complete it. You have grace for what you're called to do. And it's a peculiar grace because it's for what you're called to do. And one mistake in relationships, in ministry, in, at, at your workplace that you can make, is expecting people to move the way you move. Because you've been given the grace to move the way you move. And when you put that expectation on people, you put putting a higher expectation on them than God has put on them. So that's a dangerous place. You're going to always fall short. You've been given grace for what you call to do. Even as a leader, I, I, I begin, man, I expect this person to do that. And God said, why? I called you to do that. Don't put your expectation on them that I didn't put on them. Look what happened to Paul. They called him a God, and he said, I'm a man of like desires. And then they stoned him for not living up to the God that they thought he was. 
People will stone you. People will put an expectation on you and stone you for not living up to the expectation they put on you. And that's all right. Let them. Because you're not here to please nobody but God. And in the process of you pleasing God, everything else that matters is going to fall into place. Amen? So as I'm looking at it, I was like, peculiar grace and grace for the calling. And just look at how the enemy, he hates marriage and he wants to destroy. And then just looking at how when you're given a vision and you have grace to complete that vision, it's harder for the people around you because they don't see what God showed you. So now all they see is your back. But that's why the Bible says to know who you labor amongst. And if God is giving you a vision and you see that vision, it's your job to articulate what God has showed you to be slow to speak. Let, let, let's, let's, let's go here. Let's go here. James 1 verse 19. Understand this, my beloved brothers and sisters. Let everyone be quick to hear, be a careful Thoughtful listener, slow to speak, a speaker of carefully chosen words, and slow to anger, patient, reflective, forgiving. Slow to speak, quick to listen. Articulate your word. You have the grace to do what you call to do. Now, this person is not moving at the pace that you want them to move, and you're pushing your expectation on them, and it's going to push them away. They don't see what you see. They see your back. So now you have to be slow to speak. Quick to listen. Now, you, now, now let your words be seasoned with the gospel of love and grace. Now, all right, the person don't see your, what you got going on. You have the grace to complete what you call to do. And now you, 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 you're going all over the place because you know you got a lot to get a lot of stuff done. And now this person's not moving at the rate you want them to move. But they don't know everything that you have to do. And now you're, why you don't do this? Why you don't do that? And now you're going off, but it's a soft word that turns away wrath. Right? They don't see what you see. They don't know that. Can we pick this up? Because this makes me anxious, and I can't really work with, with things all over the place. Can, can, let's pray. Let's pray. Let's put on some worship. And come on, I'm going to help you get this done rather than just going off because you put an expectation on this person that God hasn't put on that person. When you're running a team... When you're in a marriage, when you're at the workplace, and you're the light of the world, you got to be that light. A city on a hill that cannot be hidden. You have to be slow to speak, and they're not going to see what you see. So you have the bigger responsibility to better articulate the vision that God gave you, because without vision, the people perish. Amen? It's, all right, we playing we play football. Who's more important, the center or the quarterback? The center, the quarterback, center, I don't know, <laughs> they both are equal as important because without the center, the quarterback couldn't get the ball snapped, and without the quarterback, where's the center going to snap the ball to, right? It's a team, y'all. I think, I think the Bible says that we're the body of Christ and everybody has a part to play in the body of Christ. So then I was just thinking, that's why you got to know who you labor amongst and you got to better articulate the vision, amen, because, all right, the quarterback gets the ball snapped. I was going to do an analogy, but I didn't know who was going to be here and who could catch and who couldn't, and I didn't want to be the, the uh, wide receiver and miss the ball, so y'all just work with me. I get the ball snapped to me. I, I hit the wide receiver, boom, he catches the ball, right? But what if he waited to see what I could see before he decided to play his part? Would it work? Oh, he's gonna run the play and then run back to get my view and then run back? He got to trust the quarterback. But guess what? The quarterback got to show them how to run the play. They got to go to practice. They got to work together. The devil doesn't want the body working together. You know how hard it is to get ministries to come together? And that's the word of God? 
He'll come together for this, and then you, you try to follow through, but then it comes to the point to where, you know what? I just got to use my gift and do what I'm called to do. And if they don't want to use their gift, then guess what? God's just going to throw their talents unto me because I'm going to be faithful with that one little gift that God gave me. Amen. And I'm not going to say, it's not fair. Why they get five gifts and I only get one? I'm going to work my one. Amen. And it's going to become two. And then I'm going to work that two and it's going to become four. And God is a job. God, this person could start off with five, but you can work your way there, amen? But if you steady in your head and saying, well, I really can't do nothing but this. I can't, you know, I, I'm not called a priest, but, you know, I, I like to pray, but, you know, that's not really important. What? The devil is a liar. There's power in prayer. The disciples said, teach us how to pray. But then when you walk into that one gift, he's going to give you more. He said, grow in grace and the knowledge of Christ Jesus, and I've given you grace to complete a holy calling. So his desire is that you go from glory to glory. And as he does that, we become more of a threat to that coward devil, and we're being more impactful for the kingdom. And then we don't have people going shoot up schools because they know who Jesus is. Sin is increasing, and the Bible says grace abounds all the more. That means there's an extra portion of amazing grace out here, but don't expect it if you're not being faithful with what he's already given you. Can we do a part two on a Wednesday? We can. Is that, is that, is that a thing? Y'all like, yeah, Pastor. Check it out. Philippians 3, 13 or 4. Y'all, y'all got time? I haven't eaten either, yo. Okay. Y'all got time? Five minutes? Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 45. That sound like gas prices, huh? I watched that thing go 80 to 90. I'm like, when is it going to stop? Hold on, I got to click that thing. Oh. But guess what? Gas prices going up, that means the favor of the Lord is going up too. Because he will supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. Philippians 3, 13 to 14. One of the first scriptures I memorized. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to the things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Another translation says, no, dear brothers and sisters, I'm not saying I'm all I should be, but I am focusing all of my energy on this one thing, forgetting my past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I press towards the mark of the high call that is found in Christ Jesus. It's a high call. That means it's bigger than you. But guess what? There's going to be a press. Because the more you do for the kingdom, the more of a threat you become to the enemy. So he said, I press towards the mark of the high call that is given in Christ Jesus. We're so afraid of failure, we bury our gifts. But when you press in and you bench press in, you're supposed to work out till muscle failure. Failure is not a bad thing. The world deems it a bad thing because this world is based upon perfections and give you this illusion so you can always feel less than and you always feel like you're falling short because you'll never live up to the expectation of the worldview because the devil is the god of this world and his trick is to try to make you feel less than to where you get so engulfed in your feelings and then he's coming through to attack. Now you're burying your gift and then guess what happens when you bury your gift? You wicked servant. I'm not trying to hear wicked from God. I want to hear well done, my good and faithful servant. So then that means you a new creation in Christ. You got to forget who you was. No, dear brothers and sisters, I'm not saying I'm all I should be, but I'm focusing all of my energy on this one thing, forgetting my past and looking forward to what lies ahead in Christ Jesus. I press towards the mark. So as the enemy's pushing, I'm going to push back even harder. He's pushing back. I'm not going to give up. I'm going to push back even harder. I press towards the mark of the high call that is found in Christ Jesus. God is calling you to do something that's bigger than you. God's calling you to do something that you couldn't even fathom with your natural mind because no eye has seen or ear has heard or entered into the hearts of man what he has in store for you because you love him. Do I have anybody in here that loves the Lord? 
Come on, don't be quiet about it. He's not quiet about you. Do I have anybody in here that loves the Lord? So you need to forget who you was, amen, because you're a new creation in Christ Jesus. The only time that should come back to your memory when it's time to testify of the goodness of God. Now I boast in my weakness because it is there that he's made strong. Yeah, I went through this and it should have took me out, but it couldn't take me out because I held on to Christ Jesus. When they see you in the trial, be, be transparent about your trials and what you're going through, amen, because you're going to come out that thing without smelling like smoke. Come on, somebody, because you know why? There's another in the fire. Come on, somebody. Come on. I, I'm seeing I, I seen tears. Now I'm seeing joy because it's about perspective. Amen. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. This is the word of God being spoken over you. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You are a daughter of the most high king. He said your entire household for the plans I have for you of good and not disaster to give you a future and a hope. It's his plans. Oh, I wish that scripture would have said, if I know the plans I have for you, if I know your plans I have for you. No, it's not my plans I have for me. It's his plans he has for me. Knowing that it is going to get better because he's better. Today is the day of salvation. So if you was battling with condemnation before you came in here, I want you to come up here. If you know you need a little bit, if you know if you could be transparent and say, you know what, I've been burying my gift. But I'm digging it up out the hole right now. Because I'm going to use the gifts that God gave me. And this time, I'm not going to wait till later. And maybe, if you, maybe whatever gift you got, if you haven't been glorifying God in it, let today be a realization that whatever I do is my ministry. Because I'm a representative of the Most High King. I'm an ambassador of Christ Jesus. So I'm going to stick Jesus right at the center of my business, of my work, of my Facebook, of my Instagram. It's going to all be all about Jesus. And if you know you need grace in your relationship, maybe you haven't been being elegant, your words haven't been seasoned with the gospel of love and truth, and you've been putting an expectation on the other one without better articulating the vision, amen, come up here too. Come up here too. There's power in humility, Amen. Because the Lord resists the proud. If there's anybody else, come up here right now. Today is the day of salvation. This is a point of contact. This is putting feet with your faith. This is saying, I need that. I come into agreement with that because Matthew 18, 19 says, if two of us touch and agree, God will grant us anything. And I'm going to stand on that word. Amen. Praise God. Anybody else? Y'all know how we do. Look, go ahead. Tap your neighbor. I tap the person across from you or look at them and say, come on, we walk up there together. You ain't got to go by yourself. Today is the day of salvation. Father, we thank you. We praise your holy name. Father, I thank you for the boldness, Father. I thank you for the humility that activates the supernatural, Father. Father, I thank you, Lord, for everyone here right now, Father. I thank you that the word has went forward and it will do what it set out to do because it does not return back void. We rebuke the devourer, coward devil. You cannot steal a seed that went forward tonight. We declare and decree that the seed has fallen upon fertile soil and it shall produce great fruit. Father, I pray an increase of conviction, of wisdom, of knowledge, of understanding. Father, I thank you for your grace, Father. Father, we praise your holy name. Lord, I speak your grace upon your people, Lord, that they will begin to activate. They will begin to use their gifts. Father, I thank you for Holy Spirit conviction. I pray that they bury, that the, the, the gift that's been buried, Lord, that they dig it back out and they begin to use and be faithful with what you've given them. And as they're faithful with the little, you'll make them rule over much. That they do not despise the day of small beginnings because when you're in it there's nothing small and father I thank you that there's no limit to your goodness father there's no limit to what you will do with a heart fully surrendered for you father father I lift them up along with their cares and their burdens Lord and I pray that you impregnate them with a burning desire to seek your face and not just your hand and that you move in a situation in their life where they've been requesting you the most Father, I pray that right now today be a Kairos moment, that it be your time, Lord, and that you hear from heaven, Lord, and you give them the grace to complete what it is they've been requesting of you, Father. 
Father, we thank you for miracle signs and wonders will follow us that we don't follow them. Father, we speak healing in the name of Jesus Christ. I speak healing over my children, Father. Father, we know that your word does not return back void. And we know that you were not man that should lie in your promises or yes and amen. So we hold on to your promises. Father, give them the grace to endure. As sin is increasing, we know grace is abounding all the more. Father, give them the wisdom and the discernment to tap into that extra portion of grace. That they will study more than ever before. They will be washed in your word and they will get to know you more. And they will grow in grace in the knowledge of Christ Jesus. Better understanding who they are in you. Father, we thank you and we praise you. In the almighty name of Jesus Christ we pray. And let the church scream, Amen. Amen. Praise